Well, I've come out this morning without any preconceived ideas about what I'm going to shoot. Obviously, I'm in a forest, so it's going to involve trees. But other than that, I don't really have any, any images in mind. It really is just a sort of spontaneous come out, bring the camera, have a ramble, and uh, just see if anything catches my eye. And I'm determined today not to fall into the trap of trying to take a certain type of image because I've brought a certain type of camera or film. I've got the 4x5, so I am going to be working slowly, but I think that suits my mood for the day. Well, I am still searching, searching in vain somewhat, um, being very selective as I said. There's quite a lot of nice, nice scenery around here and there's so many things you could point your camera at but one of the reasons I brought the large format is it will slow me down. I won't just snap away because they will be mediocre. I've seen a few things which look quite good but quite good's no good, not today. I don't really see this as just making another vlog, I'm actually out to make good images. So even if I don't get anything, I will continue in the same pattern and just keep my eyes and ears open. Now I've finally found something which has taken my interest sufficiently to break out the camera. And after much, um, much deliberation over composition, I've actually gone with a uh, 6x12 back, so that's a 2 to 1 crop, and I am largely excluding foreground. I'm going for the trees and the, the interesting sky, which is, which is quite bright, but has a nice cloud in there. Now this is going to be uh, a, a colour shot. I've, I've previewed it black and white, but I much prefer the colour image. And I'm going to shoot it on Ektar, because I do love the, the super saturation of the colours for this particular scene. And I also have a, a polarizer fitted onto the camera, which is going to take two stops of exposure. So I'm running around about an eighth of a second at f16. The only movements I have on the camera are I have a little bit of front rise just to keep the trees parallel. I'm tilting the camera slightly back, but if I didn't have the rise, I'd have to tilt it back further. And then the trees would do that bit where you're sort of falling back and you get those uh, converging verticals. So not as attractive. So yeah, all in all, take three frames I think, wait for the light to change a little bit and uh, yeah, and then move on. Now I know, just picking my way through the mud, ugh, I know that that was nothing special, but I, I liked it. And that's why I took it. I took it because I like the view, I like the light, I love the colour. It's sort of a restful shot and I'm in that sort of mood today. So even though it might be three frames of film and it might not be portfolio standard, I enjoyed taking it and I'm looking for more like that, more in that sort of very gentle mode. I have got black and white with me, but it's not a dramatic day. It's, it's mild, it's warm, it's calm. So I'm sort of going with the mood. Now I keep getting tantalizing glimpses of color coming through the trees. Now the sun has lifted up. It's a bit, a bit later in the day, about 11 o'clock and it is starting to pick out the ferns and the changing colour of the trees. So I would like to get in amongst it, but if you've ever tried woodland, you know how difficult it can be to make a composition out of the chaos. But uh, yeah, well worth a go, I think. Now, when I first came across this scene, I was 100% convinced I was going to get a composition here. The lighting's fantastic, the colour's fantastic, it's, the atmosphere's wonderful. But I must have spent about 45 minutes now wandering around this area, 
going across all the little trails and paths and down all the little ravines and gullies, trying every single angle, every single focal length, and I cannot get something which balances properly to my eye. I either have trees overlapping or I have problems with convergence. I have bits of light breaking through in the sky. It's just a bit too messy, and that's the problem with woodland. I would like to have got into one position to get a shot, but there's a tree in a grassy bank there, and it's just not working. So tempting as it is to take the shot, I'm gonna pass on it. Right, I'm really pleased to say that after an hour or so of tromping around, being frustrated, but uh, ultimately being picky, I have found a composition which has taken my liking. Now, I've set my camera up with the standard 150mm Nikkor, so it's a standard focal length, about 45mm equivalent. And what I'm fortunate in this particular position is I've got some symmetry of my trees. They're not overlapping, and I've also got a bit of a containment where the branches arc over the main centre of interest which is a very very attractive coloured fern which is just turning and it really balances well now it's obviously going to be a colour shot it, it is that sort of time of year and I just like the way it all falls together now so it's, it's a horizontal composition so not, nothing fancy and no filters required shooting it with ektar on my as I say my standard lens now I'm having to stop right down to f32 because I'm still not sure I'm going to get the depth of field I need. It is very, very tight. There's a, quite a lot of distance front to back, so I'm hoping that will help. I can't use camera movements. If you might say, Leo, you've got large format, why don't you use movements? Well, I can't, because I have objects at the top and bottom of the frame that are just going to be out of focus if I tilt. Now, in terms of the metering, it is relatively simple in this situation because I probably only have three to four stops of dynamic range in the scene, if you can see behind me there, the darkest area is around the tree trunks and the lightest area is the ferns. Nothing really in between, it's sort of quite even. So I can go for a very simple exposure of two seconds at f32 with my ektar. Now that is biasing, it's slightly towards the shadows, gives a little bit more shadow detail, but it's going to be so easy to bring back any highlights because like I say, they're only a, a stop or so above that. Now one more thing that's worth mentioning is that I've come out today with a new ground glass on my Intrepid 4x5. Now the Intrepid ground glass is actually very very good, it's very bright indeed, but like many ground, but, but like many ground glasses it actually suffers from the hotspot whereby you have a very bright centre to the screen and the outer edges with the wide angles particularly like my 90mm are very dark. Now typically I would then have to use my plastic Fresnel to even out the illumination and then take that off each time I wanted to do the, the fine focusing with my uh, little loop. Now this ground glass is extremely bright and I think it's by Steve Hopf who's a, a guy who makes Mountain America and it's no brighter, the illumination is no, no, uh, no clearer in the centre but what I found is it's extremely even and with my 90mm I now no longer need the Fresnel lens so I'm absolutely made up with that. Well, that's me for the morning. I've been out about three hours and I have shot my rolls of film or my roll of film. Something I'm asked occasionally is what happens when I've shot half a roll of film in the Bronica or even 35 millimeter. Do I use it up before I develop it or do I actually just rattle it off because I need to get it into this vlog? Well, actually what I do is I tend to shoot it on the same day usually. So I'd shot half that, uh, that roll of hectare in the 6x12 back and I just found a final composition after the one I talked you through and I made three exposures of that really to use up the film I don't want to waste it it's actually quite a nice uh, shot as well so yeah 
hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, this vlog this quiet lamble into the forest with me and i'll leave you with the last picture thanks for watching